Now we have the honor to welcome back Lebanese economist and politician minister Shahad Azour, who served as Lebanon's Minister of Finance under former Prime Minister Fouad Senyura's government. Welcome back. Thank you. So last year when you were here in our studios, because of the political instability mm -hmm. in the country, you predicted a 1 or 2 percent growth. And you were right. And this year, things have gotten worse. The Syrian crisis is now 15 months old. And in the last month alone, we've seen so many incidents in Lebanon with the burning of tires, power outages, and it's the first day of summer. So what does this mean for Lebanon economy-wise? Well, definitely, and unfortunately, 2012 is not going to be a good uh, performance in terms of uh, economic activity. Uh, you have to add to the impact of the political instability that some of the main reforms that were expected to take place, electricity, telecom, didn't take place. In addition, uh, what you know is very important for the functioning of the state and the stability of the economy, which is passing the budget on time, didn't happen. And therefore, I think in 2012, uh, it, we don't expect uh, that growth will be high. Uh, I think what we need to watch is inflation, because with the increase in salary and wages and the pickup in inflation in 2012, um, one has to be very careful, and I think the central bank should adjust the monetary policy in order to address this issue. Balance of payment is not showing good uh, numbers in 2012, and this is an additional issue to be addressed. Last but not the least, I think what is very important, that you know, we still have six months of you know, normal governing uh, in Lebanon, because as you know, in 2012, we will enter into an election year and I think it's very important, for, year, yeah. uh, very important for the government and for the parliament to use this window of opportunity to pass the budget, pass a certain number of legislations, and to address some of the long-standing issues in Lebanon, namely on you know, infrastructure side, electricity, telecom, transportation, as well as also on the doing business side. Well, speaking of infrastructure, current finance minister, Mohammad Safadi, proposed yeah. tax hikes he said are necessary to boost infrastructure investments. And he says it will allow for wage increase for the public sector. But aren't tax hike a bad thing for an ailing economy right now? Well, I think what we're not focusing enough on is the other side, which is the increase in expenditures. I think the worrisome part is that in one year, we are going to increase our spending by $4 trillion, uh, sorry, $4 trillion Lebanese pounds. In 2007, which is five years ago, the total budget was 12 trillion Lebanese pound. In 2012, which is five years after, the total spending will be 22 trillion, which is almost double the amount of what we uh, uh, spent in 2007. What does it tell us? It tells us that some key reforms were not made. Electricity, uh, and now we're paying more than uh, $2 billion deficit on electricity told us also that uh, we inflated the public service in terms of number of civil servants as well as also we increased tremendously uh, the salaries and wages in the public sector without increasing productivity. And the increase that we're seeing in the budget of 2012, most of it is not going to boost our infrastructure. It's going to be you know, dedicated to current expenditures that will not improve the productivity of the economy and will constitute, in fact, recurrent spending that we need or to increase our debt or to raise taxes in the future to finance. With the current turmoil, though, do you expect things to get better in the, in the, in the coming months? Because you said we had six no, more months. No. Well, well I, would, you know, I would urge the government and I would urge the parliament to use this because, as I said, 2013 is an election year, as well as also 2014, as you know, in 2014, we have presidential election. And usually, it's very difficult during election year to do structural reforms. And therefore, all these reforms were prepared, designed, and for some, the financing is ready for it. Like, for example, electricity. In Paris 3, we were able to raise $2 billion for that. Therefore, I think if this government is uh, keen on, uh, a on implementing what promised us uh, in the uh, government declaration when the government, uh, uh, you know, had the vote of confidence last year, has to pass so, uh, some of those reforms. And also for the normal functioning of the country, we need to pass the budget. And most importantly, 
during this difficult political period, we need to stabilize the public finance, and therefore we need to pass a budget. I want you to listen to what President Obama said at the G20 summit when, mm -hmm. they were, when the euro crisis dominated the agenda and comment on it. Would you please take a look? So there are going to be a, a range of steps that they can take. None of them are going to be a silver bullet that solves this thing entirely over the next week or two weeks or, uh, or two months. But each step points to the fact that um, uh, Europe is moving towards uh, further integration rather than breakup, and that uh, these problems can be resolved, and points to the underlying strength uh, in uh, Europe's economies. The G20 summit, the European leaders said they intend to work on concrete steps to integrate their banking sector. Mm -hmm. The euro crisis is affecting the whole world. What are they talking about when they talk about this integration? Well, you know, my first comment is the European leaders are moving too little too late. The crisis started almost two and a half years ago with Greece that is a small country, less than 1% of the global GDP, two, two and a half or 3% of the GDP of uh, the Eurozone. But uh, n not being decisive, not taking the right measures, being always late uh, in addressing those issues, this crisis spread from Greece to Portugal, uh, uh, Ireland, and now to one of the leading uh, European economies, which is Spain. And well, therefore, I think what is needed today is European leaders to be decisive, act boldly, which is still today. And you look at uh, European lead the key leaders, you still see differences between Germany and France, between France and UK. And you don't see a coherent team um, in the leadership of Europe today ready to you know, be bold and also to be uh, visionary when it comes to addressing um, the issues that we are facing today. Yes, we need further integration. Uh, we need further coordination when it comes to financial policies. European banks need to have uh, an authority that uh, overlook their activities. But this is not enough. Uh, it's not enough because, as I said, it's not by fixing the model that the solution is going to be sustainable. Do you, think by Greece, do you think Greece will exit the Eurozone? Does no, it matter? No, I think, well, I don't think that it is today on the table. Uh, the recent elections in, in Greece took Greece in different direction. I think what is important today that Europe is lacking strong leadership in having very strong measures being implemented on time in order to provide credibility. I think credibility is what is lacking today and confidence is what is needed in order to have you know, the solution put forward by European leaders uh, accepted by the markets and also create the virtuous, vir virtuous circle. Because additional fiscal adjustment without growth, yes, it's definitely going to hurt not only Europe, but the global economy, and socially is not sustainable. Will the Middle East be affected in Lebanon? The Middle East is already affected, mm -hmm. you know, um, in two ways. Um, Maghreb countries are uh, directly interconnected with Europe and European market and we are also very much also dependent on Europe when it comes to our imports as you know we import more than 60 percent from the eurozone uh, and it's definitely for us a time to look uh, at how the global economy is is repositioning itself uh, open our eyes toward what's happening in the east and other emerging markets and also be ready to readjust our economic model, not to be so dependent on the West and mainly on Europe. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being with us. Thanks.